When we think about data, we have to understand that there are cultural, social, political kind of components that are baked in to the knowledges that we're trying to understand. So when we decolonize, we start with ourselves. We start with the colonial mentality of how we know the world and where that knowledge comes from and where it's rooted. So I need to really reflect on the way that I'm embedded in institutions, whether that's an academic institution or any other kind of organization or community um, and the power structures that uphold that knowledge. So decolonization is a journey, it's a process, it's a practice, and it's ongoing. It's not a final destination. And so if we're looking at decolonizing data, I invite you to consider where and how you learn about the world in terms of your own disciplines, your knowledge. What decolonizing design means for me, it's not universal, but it, what it means to me through my experience and work trying to uh, decolonize institutions <laughs> is probably the best way to say it. So um, it's putting Indigenous first, the repair or that needs to be done, the reparations that need to be done, like decolonization is the rematriation of the lands back to the Indigenous custodians of the land so that they can carry forth with a sense of self-determination and sovereignty. So part of that is Putting Indigenous first is creating the space in which Indigenous people can make manifest their values in the environment, in the objects that we have. And for me, it's going back to creating objects that are, are about um, liberatory, um, liberatory joy. And for me, it's, it's all about can we optimize difference without hierarchy? Because the harm that has been done is in the hierarchy, saying this is art, this is design, this is craft, and providing different values of that based on who's in the museum versus who's in a store versus who is trading with their neighbors. Um, and it's that dismantling of that hierarchy by putting Indigenous first, by dismantling the, the modernist myth, right, of, of design, um, that we begin to make amends. And making amends is, again, seeding power, seeding space, seeding understanding, again, of uh, what is the way in which we should think about ourselves in relationship to, and I, I borrow from, again, the um, Anishinaabe <laughs> colleagues who talk about, like, again, um, all our relations, Right, which includes the land, the water, the, the air, the animals, the plants. But I also just wanted to say that we need to also find ways of valuing the emotional labor that goes into decolonizing the tools, to restructuring the tools, to putting those tools into a plain language, for identifying the problems with them, for trying to find the solutions for them, then for advocating for those implementation of those solutions because that's the other part of all of this is that emotional labor that happens and it falls in the backs of the people who have been the most underserved. And the more intersectionalities you have, the more emotional labor goes into it. And um, the fact that we as a financial institution and all of them have to recognize and say that we are a part of the colonial system, um, that we, our business model has been built on exclusion, discrimination, racism. It's easy to want to rush to reconciliation, but we cannot do that before truth. And that is the harder part is to re reflect back on the role that we have played in, in a colonial society. Business won't happen until we reestablish trust among in the Indigenous segment, but um, all equity deserving segments. Um, to me, that is the real indicator of success. Um, that is the thing that will take years and decades and generations to accomplish. Um, but to me, that is, that is the end goal of the thing that I, I think about and work towards every day.